Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to failing your Master Rank 9 test for the 100th time and wondering why the hell it's so difficult. Otherwise known as a Warframe video. Before we go any further, if you enjoy Warframe or Escape from Tarkov content, then please make sure to subscribe, like this video, and do all that stuff the YouTube algorithm begs you to do to push our content to more people. Because if you don't, well, this is going to be a very lonely video, isn't it? Warframe is a team game. We all know that even on the initial outset of playing this game. The way the game has public matchmaking and preferences you towards into, te into teams to aid each other with team synchronicity and more efficiently tackling the mission objectives, it's no figure that the game kind of encourages the notion of team play, whether that be through orb mother fights, eidolons, or doing survival missions where you have to use each other's abilities to synchronize together and make sure you can defend a target. There's a lot that goes into Warframe that encourages this whole team notion. However, sometimes we can't play in a team. Whether it be ru uh, through playing a mission not many people run and you've been paired into a mission by yourself, or maybe you're the sort of player that just prefers to do your best imitation of Gollum in a cave and be your own best friend in missions. Either way, solo play is definitely a relevant part of Warframe and often doesn't get much attention from people until you're suddenly faced with the prospect of doing said solo play yourself. So in today's video, we are going to take a look at my top choices for solo frames and show what makes them so good for said solo play. We're going to be looking at suggested play styles and how solo play is a pivot as pivotal as team play in our wondrous world of Warframe, keeping in mind that every frame has the viability to be solo worthy. And really, what we're doing here is showing some of the frames I prefer for solo play and why I feel they'd make a great addition to your play for solo endeavors. Insert chills countdown here. Number one. Starting off this list, what better and more obvious frame to start with than... Zephyr. Ha! <laughs> Bet you thought I was going to say Rhino, huh? Uh, and although Rhino would make a great addition to this list, I want to emphasize this list is not to state things that are obvious. So you won't be seeing Rhino or Chrome on here because they're bloody obvious they're great for solo. We're trying to encourage the idea of unique thinking and things that would, you would otherwise not consider for solo play initially. Although... Maybe some of this will be a bit more obvious, but still, my suggestions rather than just pointing out the obvious. Yes, Zephyr. Zephyr has had a nasty reputation as being underwhelming, but really Zephyr has one of the funnest playstyles of most Warframes in this game. And through a mixture of versatile and dynamic abilities, although she will never deal the most damage of frames in the game, the... She has the ability of utilizing her abilities such as Turbulence, much like Baruch's Elude, to redirect incoming damage, which, with the right build, you can basically become immortal and leads to a very pivotal and important solo play. As we all know that in solo play, survivability is key, where you'll be lacking in team cooperation from any other frames benefiting you in survivability or buffing you in damage, you have to rely on yourself, and frames that do well in solo play are usually, at the very least, have some element of solo survivability to compensate for the lack of team cohesion. And Zephyr is no different for this notion. Zephyr boasts an amazing array of abilities that prompt very apt solo play. With Zephyr, range is key to the survivability. So if you plan on using her in a solo fashion, then you'll want to have a minimum of 140% range. This in turn will allow your turbulence to emanate far off enough from your body to the point where no projectile will reach you, or at least 99% of them. And on the only thing at this stage that will actually be able to kill you are explosions and melee damage. Going even further, if you build for 200% range, then the turbulence become large enough to encapsulate nearby objects and allies, if you do have allies with you, that is. Now, this in turn means that you have your survivability in hand. Not to mention, Zephyr does have quite high innate armor and health, meaning you will be able to survive most forms of damage, just even if they do manage to hit you. And through the use of your other abilities, such as your tornado and other such abilities, Zephyr becomes not only a survivability frame, but one that has the ability of locking down areas with large amounts of crowd control. These tornadoes, based on the range you've built for, can then pick enemies up, fling them around, and lock that said area down. These tornadoes can then be made bigger, and provided you then shoot them with a weapon of some form, they will also then take on a damage type of the element you've hit them with. So there's some levels of synergy for pumping out some form of damage, although for the most part with Zephyr, you are looking for the element of your turbulence, allowing you to survive for the longest. It's important to realize that with this list, we're looking at the frames that give not just a boring, bland, kind of unintuitive solo experience. We're looking for the ones that will make you enjoy the solo experience. And Zephyr is no shade of that. She is 
all elements of fun, being able to dip, duck, dodge, and dive, and the fact that she's almost immortal along with that adds to the element of fun and everything else. Not to mention watching enemies get flung around by a tornado is also rather hilarious. Number two. Valkyr is our second choice for this list. Valkyr, hands down, has to be one of my be personal best and favorite choices for this list. For a few different reasons that we're about to explain. And to anyone that's played this beast of a frame, you'll probably already know what she is like. But there are a few things to this bad girl that really exacerbates just why she is such a good solo frame. For all types of players, not just the ones that enjoy having giant claws and ripping people's faces off. To start with, she is by far and away one of the best new player frames in the game. And whereas Rhino is definitely a great new player frame, don't get me wrong, Rhino basically holds your hand through everything. And although that's not necessarily a bad thing, Valkyr takes those same ideologies that Rhino has with survivability, and initially will, although she will initially hold your hand through a small element of gameplay, initially she encourages the idea of dy a dynamic approach to the way you learn. Through the act of having a slightly more intuitive and comprehensive build type where you actually have to focus on her strengths rather than just being able to slap anything else on and still have a frame that is unbelievably strong, Valkyr gives ease of access for a learning process. So not only is she great for survivability and damage, but the learning process of seeing how your power increases as you mod helps a newer player understand the aspects of solo play as well. We all know she's a huge powerhouse from her hysteria, and that is the initial on-take that most people will see when they first pick her up, which literally makes you immortal while active, allowing you to pump out insane amounts of damage through her claws, and general improved maneuverability and survivability. The great thing is, at an introductory level, you don't really need any- you don't really need to be modding for any- any power strength. Just slapping on some efficiency and duration to let that hysteria last longer and draw less energy will help, your, help you power through most lower level missions. And because of that simplicity, often makes solo runs very enjoyable. The only initial issue with this is it can be quite dull after a while. Now, my recommendation with Valkyr is using her hysteria for solo play is fantastic. It will help you push through almost any level of enemy. And due to the aforementioned modding semantics where it'll teach you about the incremental power gain you have through modding, you will get an element of learning here. But there is more to her than just her hysteria. Outside of her hysteria, you then additionally have her war cry ability, which can use an eternal war augment to also have insanely powerful solo play with survivability, slows, and buffing that can make her just as powerful as Hysteria, but with a more interesting playstyle. As I have heard that a lot of people have said that she's quite boring just for her Hysteria alone. Really, the only thing that you'll ever find you might struggle with with Valkyr is possibly running into a nullifier bubble. Ooh, nullifier bubbles. But Valkyr is a simple, great new player incentivized frame, and for me at the very least, is one that I'd recommend in the initial stages just to get used to what solo play can be like without worrying so much about dying or worrying about enemies overpowering you. Because she will, even in the early stages with very minimal modding, be able to overpower most of the star chart. Number three. Our third frame for this list is Gara, and one of the main reasons I chose this lady is the fact that she is obtained so early in the game. Obtaining her couldn't be easier. Literally doing a small quest line on Cetus and then farming out a few bounties, you can quite handily get Gara within the first few days of picking the game up. What's more, she boasts some very solo-friendly mechanics that can be very beneficial for any defense mission or survival or just general solo semantics in general. And generally aids, I say if, if I say general one more time, generally aids in the process of taking the game at your own pace. Keep in mind as well that she is one of those frames that doesn't really even need much efficiency in modding for her abilities to be extremely strong, which then helps compound the, with the idea as to why she is such a great solo frame and helps to learn the ropes of the Warframe in general. The Warframe helps to learn the ropes of Warframe in general. You know what? I have a script for this and even with a script, I still somehow fail this miserably. Ha! <laughs> So what is it about Gara that makes her so powerful? The main aspect is her Splinter Storm. This is where most of her solo survivability and damage will come from. This Splinter Storm generates a damage mitigation buff for yourself and allies, which is based on power strength. With a minimum of 129% power strength, you will have a 90% damage reduction, at which point you can then, in theory, mod for more power strength to aid in damage output, which as Gara, you have ample amounts of through your first ability and also, again, your Splinter Storm. It all seems to resolve around that Splinter Storm, doesn't it? 
Splinter Storm has a passive stack, and whenever you break your fourth ability from the outside with your first ability, like a funny little song and dance, it builds this stack. And that stack building is also then based on power strength. More power strength equals a faster building stack. This stack stacks infinitely. Did I say that it stacks? Stacking, yes. The higher the stack, oh god, the more damage you deal, which is huge. And you can literally build this to the point where each tick of damage is hitting for 2 million. And interestingly enough, it's hard, very hard to lose this buff unless you run into a nullifier. God damn freaking nullifier. Because every time you cast your fourth ability, the duration of your Splinter Storm refreshes. I mean, at this stage, why wouldn't you play her? Survivability, damage, and a frame that looks like an absolute Shogun badass. Number four. Ah, okay, I'm gonna cheat here. Technically, I'm going to class this fourth pick with three frames because all three of these frames do the exact same thing, but in different forms. Nidus, Inaros, and Hildren. All three of these frames are number buffs. Gating number buffs with huge numbers. And numbers equals survivability in short. Seriously, Inaros and Nidus both sport above average health and armor pools, both having the ability to mitigate damage and regenerate large amounts of health in an instant. Both of which offer very simplistic modding paths and even at base value can push through most high level star chart missions without get batting an eyelid. And whereas Inaros is sort of a bit blander with a passive let the weapon do the damage kind of playstyle, Nidus then goes in the opposite direction with a caster variant variant, where you rely on his abilities to build up his power and potency. With both these frames making sure you push these strengths forward with as much health and armor mods as possible, and then putting in either duration and efficiency for Inaros, or then power strength for Nidus to help his casting, these frames will essentially never die unless you'd sit them in a pool of lava for five hours. Then on Hildren's side of things, it's a little bit different, but with the same notion. She can pretty much do the same stuff as Nidus, but instead relies on humongous shields and offers one of the only frames in all of Warframe where shields aren't just a flat number with no mitigation. She can be a powerful, she has a very powerful exalted weapon in the form of her Balefire and can pump out a huge amount of damage depending on the way you mod it. And whilst all that damage is going out, you can also become impervious to incoming damage whenever she loses shields. And although Hildren may be a little bit awkward to obtain and mod and get the efficiency out of her and takes a little bit of a different mindset to work with, if you then combine this with things like Arcane Aegis and Barrier, Hildren is basically unkillable. Unless you again run into a nullifier. God, freaking nullifiers. So again, with these three frames, take them at your leisure. They are very initially rather mundane in playstyle. They don't generally have much that they do outside of just living but they live very well. And honestly, when we're looking at solo play, as mentioned, living is the most important thing. You don't have teammates to fill in for elements you may lack in. So those elements you lack in will li likely end up with you taking more damage. And because you're the only person there, you're the only focus. So you need that buffer room to be able to make mistakes and not suffer for it. And these frames do perfectly at helping you with that. Number five. Our final frame on this list is Wukong. Yes, the King Donkey Kong himself. <clears throat> With an array of abilities that can supplement a solo playstyle, you'll often find there are a variety of ways to play this lovely fella, especially since his rework all those years ago, which has taken Wukong from being a very bland, boring tunnel vision frame with only one playstyle that had with and now with a little bit of build knowledge can either be unkillable or cheat death entirely through his passive. And his passive is probably one of the more unique gimmicks, which initially I didn't actually quite enjoy. But through the process of actually playing them, you suddenly realize that these passives give you a lot of free luck. So if you somehow manage to actually die, you have a fallback, much like the previous three frames we mentioned, that can allow you to make mistakes and not necessarily suffer for them. So with Wukong, the playstyle is quite simple. You have your one, which summons a friendly companion in the form of your spirit animal, or your, your clone, if you will. And this clone will always do the adverse of what you're doing. This then gives you someone else to be shot at, diverting attention from you, and will also imitate your abilities. So you're able to pump out double the potency. If you then equip this uh, clone with a very powerfully modded ranged weapon, then that your clone is gonna have an aimbot, which literally shoots everything square in the face. Also then, having the ability of generating an armor buff through your three, and having an exalted weapon which is incredibly powerful with a large amount of initial default range, you can see just where the equation comes from as to how powerful 
uh, Wukong can be. And you can either go with a default slap as many defensive abilities or, uh, mods on him as possible and hope for the best, which works perfectly well. Or you can try and be a bit more intuitive and put some more power strength, a bit more duration on him to allow his other abilities to carry him forwards a bit more. Either way, Wukong doesn't really punish you for any of the builds you go for with him. And because of that, you can play him whatever way you want and you'll have a great solo experience. There are plenty of other frames that could have made this list. Rhino, Limbo, Chroma, Limbo, Mirage, Limbo. Pretty much any frame has the possibility of being a solo frame. But these are the choices I've gone with because I love when going uh, on a solo mission, you want something that has the ability of being a little bit more interesting. If you're sat on a solo mission, the last thing you want to do is just sit there soaking damage and be like, gosh, I wish there was something else I could be doing right around now. And... I would honestly love to know your opinion because everyone has a different mindset when it comes to what makes a good solo frame. So if you have your own idea for what a solo frame is and if you've got your own personal choice of solo frames, please leave a comment down below and I'd love to get your opinions on them. But this frame list has been my personal choice. Hopefully you've liked it. Hopefully you've maybe agreed with it. Maybe this will encourage you to play some of these frames yourself in a solo endeavor. And uh, yeah. If you have liked this video, do make sure you like it as mentioned at the start. Maybe subscribe, do all that kind of Gucci stuff. And we'll catch all of you Tom Hatters in the next video. Um, if you feel like joining us, we do record these on Twitch. There'll be a link to my Twitch down below. So if you feel like joining us in said videos and being part of the community, you know you can do. So thank you for watching. I'll see all of you Top Hatters in the next video. God, this ending was cringe. Anyway, ta -ra!